What is up guys and welcome back. We got another crazy cheater video for you. This is another one about stuffing weights down a fish, but this guy was a little bit more elaborate and a little bit more cautious and even a little bit more sophisticated about how he was putting these weights in the fish. This is an interesting one guys. You're gonna wanna stay tuned. So this one happened a while back at the One Bass US Open. A fisherman by the name of Mike Hart, who had previously won about $200,000 in winnings, over $200,000 in winnings, was caught cheating. And how he was caught cheating is very similar to how the recent walleye cheaters, Jake Running and Chase Kaminsky were caught. They basically just knew something was up, the fish were he too heavy, and the fish were dead, which is a lot stranger in a bass tournament than a walleye tournament because a lot of those walleye guys catch them really deep and the fish just tend to die. But bass tournaments, you know, your whole goal is to release the fish after. Some of his bass were dead and that's how they ultimately found out that there were weights in the stomach of these fish. You would seriously think that like Jake Running and Chase Kaminsky would have like learned from all these other cheaters because like putting weights in a fish is like the oldest trick in the book. It's probably been going on since the beginning of professional fishing tournaments, since the beginning of just any type of fishing competition it's just so easy to do and you would think that like you wouldn't even try to do it at this point because so many people have gotten caught doing it. it does make you wonder how many people get away with it but yeah this guy mike hart the way he did it was a little more sophisticated actually a lot more sophisticated he actually took hooks and then with string and tied the string and went through the sinker and then like had it tied off so the sinker wouldn't fall off and he would like push it way down in the back of the throat to where you couldn't really see the hook, but to where the weights wouldn't go into the stomach. So that way, if they were to feel around in the belly, they're not gonna feel anything because they're, they're up too far. Problem is, when some of his fish died, you know, they, they might have, they may have spit them out or maybe they just were checking on the fish trying to wonder why they died and they saw the little hook or something sticking out. And that's probably how they figured out how this guy was cheating. So this was like a big deal back then. Like this this created a lot of buzz, like very similar to what's going on now, especially because he had, he had won large amounts of money before and it just makes you think once someone cheats, once you catch them cheating, you just assume every accomplishment that they've had up to that point, they, they cheated. And you know, that's a that's a logical way of thinking. When Mike Hart was confronted at the weigh-in, so they actually, they actually found out like the first day, it was a three-day tournament. They found out about the weights the first day. They let him finish the tournament after the weigh-in. Like after he weighed his fish, they confronted him. And he just admitted to it. He just admitted guilt, basically took it on the chin, which I guess in that situation is about the only thing you can do. Like you already, you you already look like a horrible person and if you try and deny it and try and you know play games and just act dumb it, you're making it you're, you're just gonna make it worse for yourself so he did he did admit to it he had a bunch of co-anglers throughout the years and because of this like everyone just assumed that all his co-anglers knew what was going on and like some were professional other you know some were other professional fishermen others were just like you know amateurs that just get paired with these pros yeah so everyone thought that they were up to it they, they questioned all the guys from this tournament because every day he actually had another co-angler and it was it was always an amateur guy every single day but they, it was a different but it was a different guy each day. They all denied knowing, and they all said that Mike Hart would actually, like, out of nowhere, tell them to trade spots, have them go up and run the trolling motor, and then he would say that he had to rig some tackle and then check on the fish to make sure the fish were alive. And they're saying that that must have been when he was, you know, adding the weights to the fish. Pretty wild. It, that's definitely kind of weird. I mean, it kind of makes sense to the co-anglers, though, because, like, if you need to get tackle, if you need to check on the fish, like, you're obviously, you're, you're not going to want the boat just be floating around and wasting time when you could be fishing, so you're going to have the other guy run the, run the motor. But yeah, all those guys were questioned, and then one of his longtime partners, and I'm going to butcher this guy's last name, and I am sorry, but his name was Bill Simanel? Uh, Simanel, maybe? Bill Simanel? I'm probably destroying that. Let me know in the comments, guys, if I, if I destroyed that name, if you do know. But he actually came forward and just wanted to take a polygraph test right off the rip because he had been his partner for a long time. A lot of people were already, you know, wondering, like, did Bill cheat as well? Because it is kind of crazy to think that no, nobody had a clue. But you see that a lot. You saw that with Mike Long. Like, they didn't even realize that he was pulling bass out of freaking secret live wells and stuff. But that's what's so wild about this is this, like, not only, you know, he obviously ruined his reputation. He's never going to be able to fish again. But now all, everybody that he's ever fished with in the past at these tournaments, people are going to wonder if they knew and if they cheated as well. So it kind of ruined like a bunch of people's reputation. But anyway, this Bill Samantle guy, like again, sorry if I'm butchering that name, stepped forward, took a lot of detector tests, passed it with flying colors. So everyone kind of like eliminated him from uh, 
the talks of his his uh his his co English cheating, which you know there are ways to pass polygraph tests. They are not very accurate, but it seems like this Bill Samantle guy checks out, and uh, he probably and honestly it would not be that hard to to add weights to a fish. Especially if you're pulling the old, hey, can you go run the trolling motor? And you're not really looking for, if, especially if it's like your friend, if it's someone you've known for a long time, you're not even going to be looking for that. Like, you're not even going to be thinking that they're up to anything because, like, you trust them. Bill was the only one of uh, Mike's co-anglers that actually stepped forward and, and, you know, took a polygraph test. All the other guys didn't didn't uh, take the opportunity. So I guess the, the, uh, the tournament directors and stuff, like, offered the polygraphs to, like, all of his past co-anglers, and Bill was the only one to do it, which... Makes you kind of wonder, especially if like, you know, if you're an amateur and you're on the boat with a pro and they're like, hey, you know, we're going to win. And if we do, and you don't say anything about this, you know, I'll give you some, you know, I'll, I'll cut you a little bit more money. I mean, you never know. So initially the, the, the trail and the tournament directors and stuff didn't want to press charges. I don't think that they ever did, but somebody, I guess the state probably went after him. And he ended up pleading down to basically nothing. Yeah, so he ended up pleading down to a misdemeanor charge of petty larceny and disorderly conduct. And he only had to pay a $1,000 fine, which is nothing. Especially if he'd been cheating his entire career over $200,000 in winnings. And you just got to pay $1,000. I mean, obviously, he's never going to be able to fish tournaments again. Probably completely blacklisted from the fishing industry. But yeah, that's definitely like a slap on the wrist. I could not find what he was initially charged with. Assuming it's something similar to, uh, you know, Chase Kaminsky and Jake running what they're, what they're being charged with. This makes you wonder, though, like, what if they are given an out like this and they just plead down? You know, this happened back in... 2011 i would say where walleye fishing where competitive walleye fishing is right now is probably at about the same level actually probably even still a little less than where like you know professional bass fishing was back then so who knows guys i mean the one thing about what's going on now though there's just so much publicity that i don't think like anyone's gonna let it i don't think the public's gonna let it go so but if they just plead down to like a thousand dollar fine i think that would be insane i think a lot of people would be very upset but yeah guys what do you think about this like it's crazy what these guys will go through to cheat it is crazy there's another guy who thought he could stuff the weights down he did a little more sophisticated though he had this crazy little rig and you know he was smart like he was thinking like okay if they check the stomach like they're not gonna even if they filleted the fish they weren't gonna find these the way he had them placed which is pretty smart i believe the weights that he used they weren't as crazy big. They weren't as big as what the walleye cheaters were using. Like, they were using freaking 12-ounce sinkers. This guy was using, like, 2-ounce sinkers and just putting, like, one in each bass. So you're, you're not even getting that much out of it. I don't know why you would even go through this, man. I don't know why you would cheat like this. Pretty freaking crazy. I bet you this happens a lot more than people think. And you know what's really crazy? Is, like, you see, like, on certain big events, like, you see, like, a bunch of, like, bass floating around after the tournaments and stuff. And a lot of that's just because, like, being alive well all day. But what if it's because they're dying because they're stuffing weights in them? Like, you know, who knows how deep this goes? What if it goes deeper than just the anglers and people know that uh, these people are cheating? You know, I, I'm, I'm, this is all speculation, guys. I don't have any, like, inside information about this. But you just never know. This is, like, you know, I'm getting, like, some conspiracy type stuff. Maybe they let them get away with this stuff. And then once they finally get caught, like, once it's in the public, you know, that's different. But yeah, guys, comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you knew there were this many cheaters out there. I, I can't... I, there's no shortage of, of, like, available content that I can make. Because there are hundreds and hundreds of these guys. And these are just the guys that have, like, publicly been caught. Like, some of them you gotta dig a little further to find. Because they're not as... They, it wasn't covered as much. But there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these guys out there that have cheated. That is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please smash the subscribe button. Hit the like button. And I'll see you next time.